Okay, guys, so I was asked to do um, a review on a book that's not a young adult book, and I wasn't going to do any type of review on it, but I was asked to. And it's maybe a book that a lot of people might be interested in, and I hate... I hate saying that it's going to be a bad review or a negative review, but I do have a lot of thoughts about this book, and my overall opinion of it is maybe check this one at the library first. Um, or if you can find a really good deal on it, then go ahead and pick it up. But as far as paying full price, I don't know. You may want to, I don't know. So let me tell you about it, and then you guys can decide if it sounds really good or not. So the book I read was A Discovery of Witches by Deborah Harkness. I picked this up because Blair at Bitten by Booklust was doing a challenge, and this was um, going to be my Something Blue, but it's really thick. It's like 600 pages, and I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to get through it, and I wanted to pick up something... I picked up Winter Girls instead, and you guys saw that review because it was quick, it was fun, it was easy. But this book was harder to get through. Um, it starts off very interesting. We meet the main character, Diana, who's a witch, but she kind of has um, decided not to be an active witch. She doesn't use her powers, and she is not interested in being involved with the witches around town. She comes from a very famous line of witches. Um, the Bishop Witches, and um, very famous and very strong, but um, her parents died when she was like seven years old, and um, she just it's just not something that she is comfortable with. So she one day calls up from the library. She is a like a tenured teacher or something, professor, um, that doesn't really teach classes, um, but she researches and writes essays and does speeches and stuff for a really big, well-known university. She's only um, in her mid or late 20s or something like that. I'm sorry, I'm trying to remember so far back. It's a, it's a lot to remember. But um, she is researching in the library like she does every day for like five hours a day, researching topics. And um, one day um, she calls up a book that has magical writing in it and a lot of power in it and it, it kind of scares her she doesn't really want anything to do with it and kind of sends it back but then all these weird creatures start coming into town there's demons and other witches and vampires and um, all kinds of creatures come into town and start watching her and threatening her and um, there's this one particular vampire which is very very similar to the Edward Cullen vampire that we know from Twilight he is smart and gorgeous, comes out in the daytime, um, but in a way he's fragile and worried about, you know, hurting her when they romance stars. Anyway, it's very Twilight-esque romance um, comparison, honestly. Um, so anyway, they eventually start a romance, which is kind of for forbidden between intermixed creatures. And the beginning of the story, the plot is rolling. There's this book. The people want her to call up the book again because they all want to own it. It's a special book that's got um, secrets hidden in it. So they all are following Diana, trying to get her to recall this book up from the library stacks. And, um, it, you know, there's a d dangerous overtone. There's people watching her and... Um, it, the plot gets going pretty good, and you're pretty excited, and um, I think I got to chapter 8, and I was still really excited to be reading it. And then, um, the best way to describe this, and I've seen it described before in a book review, is that it's like um, one of those medical heart machines, where it just kind of goes, beep, 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 and I know that's kind of silly, but it's very true. It's very... The story gets kind of really flat, and then a couple of things happen, and it's like, okay, but it's still enough to keep the plot rolling for a while. But then, when the romance starts really, they really start connecting, and they start learning more about each other. It's literally like being back in history class. It's just, it was story after story about the vampire's past, and like the, ne the Knights Templar, and the Popes, and the 
all the wars that he went through and all this you know these secret groups that came and went in history and all of the diseases and all the people he's met and it gets kind of tedious after a while there's just so many stories being told the plot line kind of just kind of falls flat it's just like this through most of the whole middle of the book it's like when is something going to happen and when any romance does happen it's not i mean there's like two parts that are really hot and heavy it's just a very kind of dull um i mean it's a sweet romance it's very romantic you know it's flowers and wine and chocolates it's very cute but you know that's it's it's um not like any modern day you know hot and heavy um that you usually get but then um when it's established that you know there is a romantic interest here and um defying you know all of the witches and demons and vampires that say that their kinds shouldn't mix and then there's some big activity that happens and you think oh oh great the story's going to happen and then these huge things happen one after another but then nothing results from it something big happens but then they get out of the situation and then something big happens and then they get out of the situation and then a whole new plot idea is brought in and you think okay where did this come from and then it ends and the story just ends and there's so many questions unanswered and there was like this whole middle section of the book was just you know stories after stories of history of their past and demons past and witches past and all this it is it's just a history and stories and so you know but the ending has a great building plot line and all these things are happening at the end that if this is a series and the second book has to be awesome because there's so many things happening at the end of this book that it's just got to um, there's so many unanswered questions that the second book it, it if it develops more into what happened at the end of this and answers some questions and get some action going and more adventure book two is really going to be good but as far as book one goes, I mean, it's huge. Um, I don't know if it had to be this huge. And honestly, if if it's not a series and there is no book two, I, you know, it's like, I don't know about that. Um, I don't know what else to say about it. I mean, it took hours to read. Um, you know, it feels like forever, but... Um, you know, if you like history, um, I, you may really enjoy this book. I, I enjoy history a lot, but even at some points in the story, I was like, okay, come on, I want something to happen. I want to mix in here, um, you know, get going. Come on, what's going to happen next? And then a whole bunch of things happen at the end, and it was like a bomb explosion of events. So... Those are my thoughts on A Discovery Witches. I hope it made sense to you guys. I definitely said check it out from the library. Read at least, um, and we're at 600 pages. I would say read at least 200 pages before you give up on it. And I know that's a lot. That's a whole book in itself, 200 pages. But, um, it, you know, you may just grow to love it and be excited about this book which I kind of am I, I kind of am excited to see what happens in book two so I don't regret picking it up I did like it it's not what I thought it was gonna be it took longer to read and get through than I expected um, but overall I feel smarter after reading it with all the events and stuff that happened in big words and I feel a little bit smarter anyway Happy reading, guys, and thanks for watching, and I hope I made sense. <laughs> Bye.